Hello and welcome to Middle East Matters. I'm Kate Moody. Coming up in this week's show, it's an energy booster and highly addictive. But Captagon is more than just an illegal drug. It's fueling the bloody war in Syria. We look at the multi-billion euro black market that's sweeping across the Middle East. A taboo issue that can tear families apart. Rights groups are sounding the alarm for the forgotten victims of sexual abuse, the children of Gaza. And it's sometimes described as the eighth wonder of the world. We head to the Wadi Rum Desert in Jordan as it tries to lure tourists back to its scorching sun and sand. It's become known as the jihadist drug. Captagon has been banned by health authorities in most countries for decades, but it's being increasingly used in Syria and across the region as a cheap and easy stimulant. The small white pills are said to keep fighters on both sides alert and fearless during battle, while the drug trade generates much needed revenue. On the banks of the Red Sea in Jordan, this drug squad has never before seen a haul of this scale. I think the drugs are inside the car body. This innocuous looking pickup truck is hiding several million white pills. It's Captagon, a drug that is sweeping the Middle East. This is only part of it. It's probably everywhere. In fact, it's strapped to the bottom of the car, hidden in the doors, the motor, the radiator, even in the dashboard. At 10 euros a pill, this drug's loot from Syria is worth tens of millions. The war-torn country is the hub of a juicy business. Syrian TV regularly broadcasts pictures like these of drug busts, accusing jihadi or other rebel groups of being the source of the trafficking, a charge rejected by the insurgents, who point the finger instead at the supposed addiction of the Syrian army. Prized by fighters on all sides for its euphoric effects, it's also a vital source of income for insurgents in Syria. And Captagon has now become a big concern for world health authorities. It actually encourages people psychologically. On the other side, they sell in these things, they bring in more money, and they can fund their fighters one more time and buying more arms and etc. etc. So why has Captagon so successfully invaded the battlefield in Syria? The amphetamine byproduct is not a recent drug. It was once sold over the counter in France and elsewhere, and used by athletes and night workers looking for a boost. Deemed too addictive, it was taken off the market in the 80s. To try to understand the effects of this drug, we went to a clinic in Jordan's capital, Amman, where this young dealer addicted to Captagon is in rehab. The drug gives you a real boost. You don't feel the need to sleep anymore. You're more lucid, more alert. I felt strong, stronger than everyone else, stronger than whoever was in my way. But then my health started to fail, and the effects faded. How to deal with trauma on the front line? That may be what pushes fighters to take Captagon. But its widespread availability is mostly down to it being such an easy and lucrative source of funding. The pills are smuggled to Turkey in the north, as well as to the south, to the number one client of Captagon, Saudi Arabia, where it's thought to help sexual performance. Between these two countries lies Jordan. Behind these locked doors at the offices of the anti-drug police in Amman is a well-stocked room. Its shelves overflow with recent seizures of the drug. This is Captagon, and in these bags, more Captagon. That's 28 million pills seized since January. The head of the drugs police is under no doubt as to their origin. This drug is produced by Syrian insurgents. It's how they finance themselves. So who really makes these drugs? Several experts told us that the Islamic State group won't directly take part in the trafficking because it breaks Islamic law. They leave the production of the pills to other insurgent groups. It's difficult to verify this information on the ground. But in the outskirts of Beirut, a Lebanese journalist was able to infiltrate a secret lab. Workers here are busy mixing the precious pills destined for Syria. Sometimes we get an order to produce 500,000 pills in one go. We don't distribute, we just make it. We wait for orders. A few meters away, 
These men are in charge of hiding the drugs. You open the tissue package, then you stuff the drugs in and you seal it so it looks like it's never been opened. We have several techniques. We used to put it in salads or shampoo or hair gel bottles. But in tissues, it's almost invisible. The smugglers are discreet about the purchases and recipients of these goods in Syria, protecting a business valued at several hundred million euros. A business which in no small part funds the fighting in a country devastated by five years of civil war. Sexual abuse is not often discussed in the conservative Gaza Strip, but rights groups say that hundreds of children there have been raped or abused over the last two years. Still more cases go unreported. The stigma attached to sexual violence can make life unbearable, both for the victims and their families. After five months of silence and shame, Fatma's family has been torn apart. One day, two men, a relative of the family and his neighbor, took her 11-year-old son from his home in Gaza to an empty house. There, they undressed him and sexually abused him. There was a computer, and they made him watch explicit sexual images of naked men and women. He told me that they tied him up. Fatma is not her real name. Because of the stigma attached to sexual violence in Gaza, she asked for her identity to be concealed. She is one of the rare Palestinian mothers who dares to speak out about a phenomenon which rights groups say they are seeing more often. Her son's abusers were arrested, but only one remains in jail. This Gazan woman, who also asked to remain anonymous, says her son was abused as he came home from school. His bus was very late. He was waiting on the side of the road. Then a man crossed over and said, come here. He brought him to a hidden place with no one in sight and abused him sexually. According to a study by a local research centre, 693 children have been sexually abused in the Palestinian territories over the past two years. 75% of them knew their attackers, but families don't report them to the authorities for fear of causing a scandal. Of the 670 families that came to us over the past two years to report a case of abuse, only 22 asked for a legal intervention to protect their children. And most of these 22 families actually went back on that decision. So the centre only took six or seven cases to court in the space of two years. In Gaza, child rape is punishable by the death penalty. But little is done to help victims rebuild their life in a territory shattered by three wars in the past decade and where one out of two residents is under 18. Shimmering sand and scorching sun. The Wadi Rum Desert is one of Jordan's treasured UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The vast landscape has caught Hollywood's eye as an ideal filming location, while locals are adding a touch of luxury to draw in dwindling crowds of tourists. The Bedouin call it the eighth wonder of the world. At 7 a.m., it's already 40 degrees Celsius. The price to pay for this breathtaking panoramic view. It's a unique and splendid landscape. It's really impressive. Yes, I think it's very impressive. And the look of the mountains and the desert, it's very well. The rugged lines traced by the mountains guide the hot air balloon. On this sandy ground down below, camels are the best way to get around. Here, under the scorching sun, the desert colors appear even more striking than they do from the sky. It's like a red color, and it, it really reminds me like being somewhere on the Mars. Yeah. yeah, and it's like no life here, you know? It's, you, you don't see the life. It's an impression shared by filmmakers across the world. From the last days on Mars to Prometheus, and more recently, The Martian. 
spotting an opportunity to bring in tourists, local authorities produced this promotional video. The space explorers walk the dunes and take selfies, before realizing they're in the desert with a caravan of camels. But for the past five years, tourism here has been falling dramatically. This is camp, nobody now closed because no people, no tourists. Wars across the border in Iraq and Syria have scared off all but the most determined tourists, sending the local economy into a nosedive. To get them to come back, officials are going up market. They've set up more luxury Bedouin tents, like these ones, nestled in one of the most spectacular areas of the desert. This is luxury tent. This is the double tent. We provide the guests. With bathrobes, slippers and electricity, it's a long way from the basic accommodation that was available a few years ago. A night here costs around 100 euros, but for those willing to pay a little extra, there's also this, a French-built tent bubble straight out of a sci-fi film. They can see the stars, they can see the moon from inside. Lately, hotel owners have been pouring money back into the region. They are hoping that, with time, tourists and adventure seekers will come flocking back to see one of the most stunning natural landscapes the Middle East has to offer. That's all for now. Thanks for watching Middle East Matters. Stay tuned for more world news and headlines coming up.